Hello, this is Tracy Kiernan from stepbystepainting.net and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to paint this winter barn. I'm going to be using this three quarter inch flat wash brush to start out with. On my palette, I have Mars Black and Titanium White. I'll be painting the background first. So the background is a blended background around a circle. And on the bottom of the canvas, there's a sort of a snowy area on the bottom. So we're going to start out by painting a circle in the upper left hand corner, and it's going to go all the way down. We're going to leave about a third of the canvas um, on the bottom blank for where the snow is going to be. So first thing we're going to do is load the brush in titanium white. So in the upper left area, we're going to kind of estimate where we want our circle to be. So this could be a sun or a moon, depending on how you interpret the painting. And so I'm gonna paint sort of a medium sized circle. It's gonna be about the size of my fist. Um, the circle is not gonna be the size of the fist, but I wanna extend the white to about the size of a fist because we'll be using this white to do some blending. This entire sky is all gray. So we're just using the black and the white to paint the sky. So about the size of the fist for the white. And then without rinsing the brush, I'm gonna grab a little tiny black on the corner and kind of mix it together on my palette. I'm gonna add this light gray color on the outer part of the white. So it's not touching the white yet, it's on the outer part of it. And I'm gonna gently blend it into the white. So when you paint in circles and gently blend it into the white, it'll turn into a very light gray in that area. But you don't want to paint over all the white. You want to leave a circle for however big you want your sun or moon to be. So I'm going to continue painting in circular strokes. blending that light gray but not painting over the white circle and then on my palette I'm going to remix that light gray again so I just grabbed a chunk of white and blended it in back into that gray and I'm going to add this so we're still in a light gray zone area so we want to just keep painting I'm using the full width of my brush and I'm applying a lot of pressure on the brush. It's blending on the canvas, but it doesn't have to be a smooth transition, a perfect gradient. Then, as you noticed, I grabbed a little bit of black on my corner, and now I'm in a sort of a darker gray transition zone. So when we blend to a darker color, we wanna start on the outer part of it and blend into it. So I didn't paint that darker gray over that light gray yet. I added it on the outer part of it and I'm gently blending it in. And um, you have the transition zone where it transitions from the light gray to the dark gray. So to transition that, to blend it on the canvas, you would just paint over it and have it blend on the canvas. So as you work your way outwards, you're going to add a tiny bit more um, black into that gray so it gets darker and darker. It doesn't turn um, black all the way. It stays a pretty dark gray all the way to the edge of the canvas. And then like I said, it doesn't have to be a perfect gradient. So if you have some lighter streaks of gray in the dark gray zone, that's okay. And if you accidentally get some darker streaks of gray in the lighter gray zone, that's okay as well. Also, if your paint is drying super fast, which it probably is with acrylics, and there's a lot of blending in the sky, you can dip the tip of your brush in the water like I did, 
and kind of distribute it into your paint. That little bit of water will kind of boost the paint to um, keep it a little bit wet, but also help with the flow of it. So I'm gonna continue adding that gray. My gray got kind of light right there, but that's okay, because I can always go darker. And so I'm just painting in circles. We're doing big circles right now in that area on the uh, outer part of the canvas. So I'm gonna mix kind of a darker gray. Actually, it's more like a medium gray. Again, the sky does not go completely black, so it stays gray all the way. And I'm just gonna keep painting in circles. Of course, um, it's kind of, it's going off the canvas here. So when I do my, my circular stroke, it's gonna go off the canvas, but I still wanna keep that shape of that circle because it's all radiating around the moon. And down here, I decided to add a little bit more white into the area. So that white kind of blended it in and I'm just continuing to add the gray. I'm gonna grab some more lighter gray and kind of go back over the middle area. And we wanna to try to not over blend because the more you work this, the more you keep trying to blend it all together, it may end up just being one solid color. And so it doesn't have to be a perfect transition from each gray to the next. Um, the effect that we're really just trying to create is this swirly sky around um, the moon or the sun. So these white streaks in there, I'm kind of doing that on purpose to create that sort of whimsical effect. And I'm just doing that by adding a little bit more white to my brush and blending it around. Of course, I can't really work that color much anymore because it's already dried, so that's not really workable anywhere. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of leave it like that, knowing that there's gonna be a lot going on in this and the sky isn't really gonna be too much of the focus. Um, but if you want to, you can go over your sun or moon a little bit more and define it with the white. So just really kind of go over that circle, make sure that there's a nice coat of white in there so it's nice and bright. That's the brightest part of our painting. And I'm just going back with the brush. It's dry right now because I dried it off with a towel. Just kind of adding a few dry strokes of white around there. But that's it for the sky part. This is a stretched canvas that I'm working on, so I'm gonna go ahead and extend the color on the sides. So I'm just taking the gray on my palette, maybe add a little bit of water in there to get it to smooth out a little bit or, or flow a little bit. And it's gonna go all around the canvas on all the sides. So that's just that part. And I'm gonna go ahead and transition to the next step. So we left the bottom third of the canvas blank where that snowy ground is going to be, but I'm actually going to add a little bit more gray in the sky down here, knowing that part of my horizon line or um, where the top part of the snow is gonna be is going to be exactly at a third. And I just wanna make sure this gray is all the way down. I know there's gonna be trees there, but I don't want any bright white spots showing. So I'm just extending this gray down and I just estimated one third of the canvas on the bottom blank. So that entire bottom area is actually going to be snow and we are gonna paint it white. We're not gonna leave the canvas white and we'll be blending a little bit of gray in that snowy area as well. So we're gonna rinse our brush off all the way. I'm still using that three quarter inch flat brush. You may need to freshen your titanium white if it, there's no fresh white on your palette. So get some more white if you need to. And we're just going to paint the snow. So our horizon line is not a completely straight horizontal line. It is a lumpy line going across. And then this entire area is painted white. So you wanna make sure a nice, solid coat of white is applied in that whole area. Up here, if your paint turns a little bit gray, that's okay because we have some of that gray that didn't dry all the way and that's 
okay, but we are actually going to make some gray on purpose on the bottom. So this will give our snow some depth and I just grabbed some of that light gray that was still in my palette, palette. and at the bottom, I'm gonna apply that light gray and gently blend it up into the snow area. I'm gonna add maybe a, a little bit more darker gray in there, right there at the bottom and blend it up. So that'll give your snowy area some depth because uh, it'll give the illusion that things in the distance are a lot brighter and whiter. Things that are closer are slightly darker. And then we can go ahead and extend that color on the bottom of the canvas. So the next thing we're gonna do is transition to our trees. We have trees that are on each side of the barn. So we kind of envision the barn in the middle of the canvas. The top of it is going to be close to the sun. And we have trees on the left and the right. So if you are not comfortable painting the fan brush trees, I recommend kind of practicing first on scratch paper or on the back of your canvas. I have a really good tutorial on my website for how to paint trees with a fan brush. So you can check that out and I'll link to it in this post as well. And so what I'm going to do on my palette is I'm going to mix a dark green and that's simply done by adding a little bit of red into the green. So this is Hooker's Green Hue Permanent and Cadmium Red Hue Medium. So the proportion is probably about three parts green to one part red, but just kind of experiment with that on your palette. Um, if you mix your color and it looks brown, if it turns to like burnt umber or um, a legit brown color, you added too much red. So you don't want equal amounts, you want more green than red to make it a dark green. So the tree is going to be done with layers, starting with the dark green, and then we're going to add some lighter green layers to it. So go ahead and wet your fan brush. This is a number two fan brush. It's a Royal and Langnickel Zen number two fan brush. And so when you wet it and pat it dry, you're going to apply the paint to your brush. Teeny bit of water is always helpful to uh, get that paint to flow a little bit. So I'm just adding very tiny amounts of water into it and I just want to make sure that paint is nice and distributed on my fan brush. Um, I want to make sure that there's paint right there at the tip of it because really I'm only going to be using the, the tip of the bristles and not the full amount of the brush. And I'm going to start out by making a mark. So it's a, a little vertical mark. And I'm going to hold it at an angle because I want smaller strokes. I don't want to use the full width of the brush just yet. But as I work my way down, I'm going to work in zigzag motions and I'll be using the full tip of the brush about right here. And so I'm just stamping left and right going in a zigzag formation direction and forming the shape of the tree. The tree gets wider as it gets to the snowy area. And this tree's kind of going off the canvas. So it's a little awkward knowing that we don't have the full shape of the tree showing. So we kind of have to imagine part of it is going off the canvas or on the sides if you want to turn your canvas on the side and have it go off if you're feeling brave enough to do it that way. And so I'm doing a second layer here because the first layer I got a really skimpy tree. So I had to go ahead and reload my brush and kind of redo it to fill it up. So just tapping the tip of the bristles going left and right and forming the shape of your tree going to the snow. And we don't see the tree trunk in this painting. In fact, the snowy area is gonna overlap the bottom of all our trees anyway. So that's the first layer. The second layer, I'm gonna go ahead and make a lighter green. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white to my pre-mixed dark green. So just add the white into that green that you created on your palette. Load, make sure the green is right there on the tip of your brush and we're gonna do it again. So this is our second layer and we don't wanna cover all the green because that 
green is kind of the shadowy area of the tree. And so I guess we can call this, this the lighter part or the highlight of the tree. And we're just doing it again. We're just stamping, going left and right in a zigzag formation. And that is our second layer of our pine tree. We can go ahead and add a third layer, but this is not going to be dry enough to add snow yet because if I try to add pure white in there, it's just gonna turn into a very light green. So what I did was I added a few little um, dabs of a lighter green, but then decided, okay, I'm gonna let this dry and come back to it so that I can add some actual pure white snow without it turning into green snow, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush and I'm gonna paint two more trees. And these other trees are going to be on the left side of our imaginary barn. Our barn isn't there yet, um, but we're gonna do two more trees. So I'm gonna repeat the steps that I did with the first tree by starting with my darker green so mixing that little bit of red into the green to make our dark green. Getting our fan brush ready and making the vertical mark. I know my hand's covering right there. And then you wanna, when you start out the tree, you wanna kinda hold the brush like at an angle to get the smaller stroke. But then when you, when you go down, you, then you can use the full width of the tip of the brush. And so you're gonna stamp left and right. Your tree will look skimpy at first and then you can do another layer to fill it up. And then when you do that second layer, then you go ahead and um, I'm gonna paint my second tree in here too so I don't have to rinse my brush again and start over. Um, but I'm going to do this second tree and the second tree is going to be shorter so I'm going to have my top of the tree be a little bit lower than the other one but still the same thing. Stamp the brush left and right in a zigzag formation. It looks skimpy at first and then you're going to go ahead and do a second layer. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that lighter green in there. So knowing that this tree is further away, I am going to do it first and then I'm going to do that other one second. So that other one can overlap that smaller tree. And this smaller tree I'm actually going to make a little bit darker than the other one. Um, you don't have to do that. You can make them kind of the same color if you want. Um, but I wanted them to still kind of stand out and not mesh together so that smaller one didn't have the brighter green in there, just had a little bit of bright green. And this one had the lighter green. So that, now that my tree over on the right is a little more dry by now, I'm gonna go ahead and add some lighter green in there, or snow color. And so I'm gonna load in just the white and go ahead and apply it. So when you're doing just the white, you don't wanna cover it completely. Just a few little dabs of the white and kind of emphasize the edges of the tree, so all the left edges of the tree. And I'll go in there and add a few more dabs of white over at the top. So it's kind of a different technique with the snow. I'm not doing the zigzag thing. I'm just adding sort of dabs of areas of where that snow would be sort of resting on the branches. And then I'll do it to the other tree as well. This one isn't as dry as that other one, but that's okay. We can have the green looking snow for variety. It's fine. So that is it for my trees, you wanna go ahead and dry your painting at this point because we'll be drawing the barn next and we don't wanna smudge any of our trees or anything like that when we do the drawing. So I'm taking a hair dryer and making sure that everything is dry. The sky is dry, but these trees need to be dried so I don't smudge them. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and redefine my snow. So we want that snow to really look like it's overlapping the bottom of the trees. 
That's why we don't see any tree trunks and those trees are pretty in the distance. So just redefining that snowy hill right there. You will need a pencil and a ruler next because I'll be showing you how to draw the barn. So this barn roof starts just under the sun. Um, I realize your sun is probably likely not the exact position of my sun. So just kind of estimate the top of your roof. But the angle of this roof is not a 90 degrees angle. It's an obtuse angle, so it's more than 90 degrees. Um, so doing that was going to allow the other um, angles of the barn to kind of go diagonally but not vertical. So we have the two angled lines and then we have two more angled lines to create the barn roof. And so you can use your ruler to sort of measure the spacing of your lines. So I'm just using my ruler to make sure the bottom of those lines are lined up horizontally and the bottom of this angled um, triangle area is lined up horizontally so that makes your make sure your lines are even that way and there's actually a horizontal line right here so that's going to divide where the top of the roof is and where the bottom um, the front face of the barn is going to be and then the next two lines we're going to draw are completely vertical lines so taking our ruler we're going to lay it down so it's completely vertical and the lines are going to go to the snow. So the space of the roof is about equal what the space of the face or the bottom part of the barn is. So you just kind of estimate that with your fingers. Um, it's about the same height. And then just take your ruler and do two vertical lines. If you're not too keen on this drawing, I do have a template that you can download and print on a regular size sheet of paper. Um, and it's pretty much the exact size of this barn. So you would just print it off and use some transfer paper and you can uh, draw it that way. So there's nothing wrong with using the traceable if you're having a hard time with the drawing. But I think it's a pretty simple drawing, just trying to get those angles right. And then we have the opening of the roof, the eaves of the roof that kind of angle outwards. And then uh, we'll paint those in later so you can see the detail of that. Uh, but I'm just kind of pressing harder here, making the lines slightly darker so that they show up nicely. Um, for the video, but also when we do the painting, we really want to kind of see what we're painting in. So that is it for the drawing part of our barn. We're going to go ahead and paint the barn next. And to do the barn painting, you're going to need to make sure you have some nice fresh cadmium red hue medium on your palette. We're going to be using the three quarter inch uh, flat wash brush. And then freshen up some hooker's green hue because we're going to actually add a little bit of green into that red of the bar and it's going to give it that rustic sort of look. Um, that green will allow our red to get kind of dark as well. So we're going to go ahead and paint that entire shape that we just drew in. I'm going to start by loading my three quarter wash brush in the red. Grab a teeny bit of green in there, kind of distribute it into the red. And um, we can kind of leave it streaky and not blend it all the way because that'll give it that sort of um, variation in color. If you like that effect, if you don't, you can mix it all the way and have it just be a solid uh, red. But I like to have varieties in colors, so I'll change it and grab some more red and maybe some more dark red and kind of blend it together. But what I'm doing is I'm painting all um, full width up and down strokes except for outlining the roof, the shape of the barn. So I can use the tip of my brush to cut in or outline the shape. But then I want to try to fill it in with all vertical strokes as much as possible. So using the full width of the brush, but then kind of you're going to have to go at an angle when you go to the roof because that would be kind of tedious to keep that all going vertical in that area. So yeah, that's um, pretty simple. Just filling that 
whole space in solid. I will be speeding my video up here slightly, but a super simple step of basically just filling the whole shape in. Um, you might have some coverage issues when you get to the trees, and I'll kind of show you a way around that uh, because we, we don't want a barn that is a see-through barn where we can see the trees through the barn, but I'll kind of show you um, a way you can combat that. But I'm just gonna go ahead and fill all of this in. I'm gonna go silent here for just a bit and put on some music. And when I get to that step about the trees, I'll let you know. You can add a teeny bit of water to the tip of your brush in there. That'll help with the flow of the paint. So see how that tree is kind of showing through the red? You can kind of disguise that a little bit by adding more streaks of the darker red. So grabbing a little bit more green into that area and doing some darker streaks in that area will disguise the fact that this tree's kind of showing through. Or you can just apply several coats over it to make sure you have good coverage. I grabbed my T-square ruler there just to make sure that my roof was lined up. Sometimes after you draw it and you paint it in, things get kind of funky. So just wanted to make sure things are lined up like they should be. So I'm just going in and adding more streaks of the red and the darker red in there. And so when you're done, go ahead and rinse all that brush off. And we're going to go ahead and do the next step. So load your palette in some fresh titanium white and grab a number four round brush. We are going to do some of the outlining of the barn. So it's okay if our red's not dried all the way because this is actually going to be on the outer part of the barn. Um, it might be touching the red a little bit and dragging the red. And if that happens, then you can dry it real quick. But this line is on the outer part of the barn. So I'm taking my round brush and the white and I'm adding the white edging on the top of the roof. So this is the number four round brush. Um, you don't have to use a round brush for this, um, especially if you feel kind of shaky using the round brush. You can try an angle brush. So if you have like a three eight angle brush or a quarter angle brush, that'll really kind of help you control the line a little bit better. Um, you can possibly try it with a flat brush. Although the flat brush, because it doesn't have an angle, it might be kind of hard to control. Or you could try it with a white paint pen if you have a white paint pen handy. So there's a few other alternatives to this. But um, it is kind of a precise line to draw. And um, even my hands get kind of shaky doing these 
really these lines having to paint a straight line. So just do the best you can and relax and remember it's just a painting. We're not trying to make it look real and in fact if it looks kind of wobbly it gives it some more character. So remember the eaves of the roof kind of flare out a little bit on the bottom and then I'm just re making sure when you reload the brush you want to load it right there on the tip of the brush so that you can get that line going versus if I loaded the entire brush we're not using all the bristles we're just using the tip of the brush so we're doing the vertical part of the barn and going all the way down to the snow we can't do any of the inside part of the barn until it dries so we're going to go ahead and um, utilize this round brush and all of that fresh white to do the snow so this is my favorite part of the painting this is super relaxing um, to really bring this painting to life by painting the snow and I'm just doing this with the round brush painting little dots all around the sky um, you want to try to make some dots you want to add some variety in your dots so they're not all the same intensity or all the same size some of them are smaller so I'm pressing very lightly some of them are bigger so I'm pressing hard with the brush um, they're clustered together they're not all evenly spaced apart so we have snows that kind of go in clusters so it's much like painting stars in the sky um, kind of the same concept um, but you just want to kind of go all over and you can even use the back of your paintbrush so you can stamp it if you want to do it that way or you can use the bristles I like to do a variety of both and then definitely we would have snow overlapping the trees I did not have snow overlapping the barn because I didn't really want to mess with it right now but if you wanted snow overlapping the barn you can go ahead and do that and so just paint as much snow as you want sit back and relax this was my favorite part of the painting the next thing I'm going to show you is a little bit advanced although you could be the judge of that we're going to do a path under the barn so it's going to be used with a darker gray color and um, we're going to kind of make some different variety of the snow of making it look kind of lumpy in some areas. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix a gray on my palette with the black mixing with the white to make sort of a medium gray color. And then I'm going to start by, um, I'm actually going to water this gray down a little bit. I know my water looks really red right now and I probably should rinse it, but who has time to get up and rinse our water? Um, but anyway so I'm going to go ahead and do this path um, the reason why I slightly watered it down is because it needs to be really flowy and thin um, versus if it was thick and chunky and dry it wouldn't really do this effect but I'm doing left and right strokes with the round brush and I'm just making a pathway so this is a gray path that ex that's going down from the middle of the barn and I'm just doing left and right strokes and I'm going to see if I can get my path to be a little bit darker towards the bottom and kind of lighter in the back, but it doesn't really have to do that. So I'm just going to keep painting left and right strokes, forming the shape of my path. Gradually adding a little bit of darker gray in there on the bottom and just kind of blending it up. So to make it look like that snow is kind of on the left and right of the path, we're just gonna grab the white and make our strokes kind of go curved to look like it's kind of um, creating a little bit of a of depth like a hill that's kind of next to the path so just painting curved strokes next to the path with the white the 
then I'm going to go ahead and paint the curved strokes on the left too. And then so my path doesn't have to be a even uh, like the diagonal lines on both sides because remember there's snow on the ground so the snow is kind of going over the path a little bit so it doesn't have to be perfect it could be messy And I'm just going over my path um, over here in the back with a little bit lighter gray. By now our barn should be dry and we're going to go ahead and draw the barn door in. Unless you're feeling super confident, um, it's probably easiest to kind of get an idea of where we want our door and window to be. So I'm going to use my ruler here and I'm going to draw the horizontal line that divides the roof up because there's actually a white line that's going to be right there. And then I could lower my ruler just a little bit to where that top part of the door is and I'll draw the horizontal line for the top part of the door. And then I can change it vertically and do the vertical lines. Now, I probably should have done this with chalk because you probably would see it a whole lot better than my pencil mark. But you can kind of look at the example to see where that door is and kind of estimate where yours is going to be. But it's a very large door. It takes up a lot of the area of the front face of the barn. And um, so about two fingers space um, on the left and right um, left over. So there's not a lot of space left after drawing that barn. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of sketch my top part of the window in. So it's a triangular window and um, it is above that uh, horizontal line that we drew for the roof. And I'll kind of hold my canvas at an angle so you can kind of see maybe the drawing a little bit better there. Um, but definitely you can kind of look at the example to see and then I'll be painting the shape in as well. So we are actually going to paint our barn door and our window in and we're going to make brown on our palette. So we want to mix equal amounts of red and green and you will make a reddish brown color. So red and green together. That's the cad red and the hooker's green hue. Um, mix them together. And ideally, um, you really just want that to be darker than the barn door, the actual barn color, because it wouldn't show up if it wasn't darker. So we're just going to take that brownish color that we created and do up and down strokes. This is the three quarter inch flat wash brush. And I'm just painting in the shape of the barn door. And I'm going to also paint in the shape of the window as well.
So you see the width of that window. It's not the same width as the barn door. It is um, not as wide. And watering down that brown color really helps um, with the flow, but also to get those lines nice and straight so that when you're painting them, it's not gonna look all dry. Um, but getting that to flow a little bit better. You can even take your ruler and kind of line it up horizontally to make sure. Um, but keep in mind, we're going to be painting the edges of the shapes white. So if it looks kind of wobbly the way you painted your shape in, that is okay. We'll be touching it up and making it look better with all that white. So what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing some black on my palette and I'm painting the eaves underneath the roof. So this area kind of goes down at an angle. So a diagonal line right there and just fill in that triangular shape. And then what we're gonna do is, so this is the number four round brush with Mars Black, and we're gonna use that black, slightly water it down to get it to flow because we'll be painting a very thin line so this is one of those things where if you're not comfortable with the round brush with these thin lines, um, you can do a black paint pen, you can do an angle brush, possibly a flat brush, depending what you feel more comfortable with. But I'm just going in and right under the white of my roof, I am outlining with black. So right there, literally right next to the white, on the inside of the barn, that's gonna be outlined black. And I did not do that to the left and the right, I only did it to the roof part. Then we're gonna go ahead and um, touch up the, the roof if needed. So if there's any part of the black where you accidentally outline too much, you can touch it up real quick. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and do the trim of the window and the barn door. So this is fun. It'll make it really look like a barn now. So I'm just taking the white and the number four round brush and I'm outlining the shape of that rectangle. And of course I gotta hold my canvas at all crazy angles to get in there. I have wobbly hand. It doesn't look like I do, but I do. Um, it's kind of um, tedious, I'll be honest with you. But definitely the white paint pen is super helpful for these sort of things or the angle brush. So I'm gonna do an X on the window and it doesn't have to be perfect either, in fact, um, having your lines be a little bit wobbly gives your painting the extra character. It makes it look more like a painting and not a realistic photograph. And so I have a horizontal line that goes across. And then go ahead and outline the outer part of the barn door and the vertical line. So the horizontal line and then the vertical line. So you can do the white line on the outer part or the inner part, just kind of depending. Um, it doesn't really matter if you do it on the outer or the inner. And then, so this needs to be divided into four. So I'm gonna do a vertical line down the middle and a horizontal line across. And my color kind of mixed with the brown, and that's okay, actually. I kind of freaked out at first, but it really kind of gives it that sort of two-tone look with the white. I really kind of like how it blended with that brown. Um, so maybe yours didn't dry all the way and it did that effect too, or maybe it did dry all the way and it's bright white, so it doesn't really matter. And then each of the boxes gets an X, so there's an X through each of the boxes. Right here at the top, I decided to make it kind of wider 
um, but ended up changing that later and I'll show you what I did later but I thought okay well maybe we can make this part kind of extend out a bit if you like that you can keep it that way or you can not next I'm going to show you how to do the wreath and uh, it's really simple so you start with the white and you do a circle this is still that number four round brush so just do a white circle right at the top and then we're gonna um, you can do this before your white even dries it's fine you don't have to wait for that white to dry and then grab some green and do these texture strokes so I'm doing these sort of X strokes on the wreath there you go now you can see what I'm doing so little short angular texture strokes and it's okay that that is blending with the white so if your green is grabbing the white as you're doing this that's fine so just little dabby x strokes all around the wreath give it some pretty texture and you can just keep grabbing that green and make it as full as you want so just go in and add a second layer in there with some more green strokes Next, I'm going to show you how I did the fence posts. So we're going to rinse our brush off. We just need the Mars black and slightly water that black down. So it'll be nice and flowy at the bottom. So using the round brush, I'm going to do three uh, vertical posts. And so this is a farm fence. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, um, if we make it look kind of messy, that's okay. So there's our first post and then we'll do our second post. So the second one is slightly higher and uh, kind of curved at the top. Um, all of the posts are kind of curved at the top. And then we'll do the third post. This one is hanging off on the edge of the canvas here. And then the horizontal beams of the post are actually not going horizontal. They're kind of going diagonally. So two diagonal lines. And then over here, two more diagonal lines. And these uh, other two diagonal lines are not necessarily at the same angle as the other two. And I'm just going to go in and kind of redefine my fence post kind of make it more curved at the top and give it some more shape so all three posts are kind of different heights um, slightly different widths and um, the fence is not necessarily perfect it's a farm fence it's kind of um, rugged I'm going to make this third post kind of hang off on the side of the canvas and if you want you could see that kind of extend the beams off the side of the canvas I know that got cut off right there so next I'm going to go ahead rinse the brush and I'm going to do a little bit of snow on my wreath so now that green is dry I'm just going to go in and kind of dab some white on the wreath so I'm just taking that white and just adding dots all on the wreath give it some snow texture. It doesn't have very many details because it's a small piece that's kind of far away. What I'm gonna do next is touch up some of the red in the barn. So if maybe your white trim got kind of unruly, this is a 3 8 inch angle brush. And I'm going to use that to go in and kind of touch up, um, especially up here. I didn't like how that white was hanging off on the, the left and right side. So I went in there and covered that up. Just This is just the red and the green combo. And I'm just taking the angle brush and I'm just going in and kind of touching up some of my white that might be kind of going over the red in ways that I don't want it to. So, and you can go in and just kind of redefine your line and um, make it more straighter if you want. An optional step, if you're happy with the way your barn looks, you can go ahead and skip this step. 
but you can see that the angle brush is really kind of helpful to get those lines in there and um, it can be done if you're watching the video and you haven't painted yet and you have an angle brush you can try when you actually do the painting you can try using the angle brush for all the white lines so it kind of really helps to do the line but it really is a, prefer a preference thing so sometimes I like to use the angle brush for the lines sometimes the round brush it just really depends on what you feel like using the brushes all have multiple purposes for different things Next, I'm going to go in and touch up my barn door with the round brush. So I'm going to get my brush and the titanium white and just kind of go over this area a little bit, the horizontal and the vertical. And also touch up some of my X's as well. Okay, I'm also gonna do the snow on the beams. So super simple, just grab the white and paint like a blob on top of the posts. And just, this is th still the round brush and then paint kind of a blob on the horizontal beams as well, just with the white and we're not doing any shading or anything like that. Also the white overlaps part of that black. Next, I'm gonna take the black and my number four round brush. I'm gonna paint door handles on my door. So on the left and right side of my barn door, I have little handles. And also I'll be painting um, a horizontal and vertical line. So here are the handles, so on both sides, so like a little sort of line, vertical line. Then I'm gonna paint a thin horizontal line right in the middle and a thin vertical line going down vertically right in the middle. So that is the conclusion of how to paint a snowy barn. And I'm going to go ahead and sign my name. This is a 5-0 round brush that I'm using. I'm slightly watering down some black, twisting it to get the paint right on the tip. And I'm going to sign my name on the left side of this painting. You may be wondering what happened to the bow of the wreath. I actually added it after I signed my name. So I'll demonstrate that for you here in just a second. So to do the bow of the wreath, uh, you actually just need a clean brush and the red and mix a little bit of white into the red to lighten it up. That'll make it kind of stand out from the rest of the red in the painting. So mix a little bit of white into the red using your number four round brush. And then go ahead and take that and paint a little bow on the bottom of the wreath. So we have two loops and we have two little lines kind of hanging down. And then I'm going to add a little bit more red in there to kind of make it stand out a little bit. So I'm just going back over that with a little bit more red. And then I can go ahead and add some cute little red berry dots into the wreath. So that is the conclusion of how to paint a snowy barn. I hope that you enjoyed painting with me too. Thanks for watching.